Hello, hello, welcome, welcome, welcome to Podswoggle Wrestling Podcast with Entertainment and the Podswoggle Title Tournament live on Twitch. I am your host, Mullet. If you are new every single month, the boys from Podswoggle Wrestling Podcast with Entertainment from the Arcade Audio Network of Podcasts presents a live stream on Twitch mixing the worlds of professional wrestling and anything else, whatever craziness and insanity we have, the computer simulated video game wrestling action to create the winners of the pod swoggle and the heels and heels championship and the members of the swoggle squad that earned bragging rights and powers and responsibilities on said show. Basically long story short, it's an opportunity for us to jump online have a good time we got b sumner in the house we got david c in the house Woo! finally watching live happy to have you david tonight it is extreme rules and my god do we have a doozy lined up for you you're reigning defending marcho madness champion two years running zach saber jr the tournament goat the submission wizard Hey, boys. Heels and Heels are here. Is your Potswoggle champion, and he will be defending it in Extreme Rules matches tonight. He is currently tied with Braun Strowman all-time for most successful uh, title defenses in a row at five. If he wins one match, he'll become the all-time record holder in that category. The man has not been pinned or submitted in over three years in Potswoggle streams. He'll to go up against the current pit champion, who's only been pinned once in two years, Trent Beretta. Your former champion, Thanos, is going to be involved, who has not been pinned to lose his title yet. We have a, a, a raucous Heels and Heels tournament. We have so much. Um, thank you guys for joining us on this beautiful, beautiful Wednesday evening. I will take the opportunity real quick to send out the Twitter message to alert everybody that the stream is live and running and we're going to get underway. And uh, and then after that, we will get underway. Um, do also want to let everyone know up front that, of course, uh, the month of May for your boy mullet here is a little bit crazy with plans. Uh, the next stream will be on May 30th, May 30th, uh, which is a Wednesday. And that will be our yearly May tournament, which means that you, the the host at home, Trent versus Zack Sabre Jr. 2009 Marshall Finals calling it now. Spicy mac and cheese and video game wrestling. My life is perfect. Sounds like a great day to me. Uh, that is the viewer submission tournament. So you can go to Twitter, go to at Podswoggle, um, and send us a five. That's the, the limit. You can send us five picks that will compile our list that we can choose from to choose our um, participants for the May Twitch stream. I'll be pr- pr- promoting it all throughout the um, the stream. Um so yeah, so be thinking of that as the tournament goes on. We're live on Twitch um, right now for the... I can't type today. I had some a bunch of good picks. I forgot to write them down. Yeah, they'll come up. Don't worry. So I'll go in at heels. Heels tourney. Twitch.tv. Slash Podswoggle is the place to be. Now let me make sure that hits. And it did. So let's get underway. Again, Extreme Rules is what we're doing this month. And we're going to get kicked off. Your current Swoggle Squad champion is Augie. It's a rare case based on brackets and pickums that uh, myself and Tope have both been blocked out this month. Augie has Zack Sabre Jr. from having the best March of Madness bracket, so he gets three picks. Uh, Widden had the second best, so he gets two. Um, we had two. Uh, we, Abeyance could potentially become the new Swoggle Squad champion because of Beretta's pit uh, selection and Freakazoid being owed one. What's going on in Patrick uh, back from Swoggle Mania 4? Uh and Rich and Spencer get a collective one, uh, but neither one of those are going to be uh, underway here. It'll be one of Widden's two picks. Augie Reigns equals the best Reigns. Better than Roman, at least. Uh, one of Widden's two picks, recent WWE Hall of Famer Mark Henry, taking on. Uh, Augie requested 
a form of Dwayne Johnson. I told him I'd give him the biggest Dwayne Johnson I could find. Nobody was really creative enough. So instead, Augie went the Jumanji route. Smolder Bravestone will be representing Augie here. Um, and it's Extreme Rules. Let's see what happens. Uh, Augie, for the pit, forgot the concept of the pit and sent me a list of every Rock or Dwayne Johnson character uh, known to man and thought his name was Spencer Bravestone because of uh, the Spencer character from Ballers. And uh, I had to correct him once I actually found Jumanji and it was Smolder. And he's like, oh, that's even better. That's clearly not Jumanji. That's Rampage Dwayne Johnson. Look, there's so many different rocks which bullshit attires and different names on them. That's the best one I could find, Tyler. So this is what we're going with. The bell's rung and we're underway for our April tournament. Thank you guys for joining us. The Rock coming out hot with some punches on the world's strongest man. The winner of this will get a pod swapple title opportunity later on. This is the uh, the matchup that matches up with Zack Sabre Jr. and Beretta, which will main event our first round and our, our opening round of the Heels and Heels. Rock putting the boots to Mark Henry. Running elbow drop. Mark Henry dives out of the way. Of course, we had a lot of uh, of grief during March of Menace about countouts. No countouts here today. And Mark Henry's already got some weapons. Kendo stick shot to the head of Smolder Brave. So Mark Henry's not satisfied. Looking for something else. Sledgehammer to the butt of Smolder. The joke's on Augie. He should have went with Doom Dwayne Johnson. He would have had body armor. Mark Henry is laying to waste the body of Smolder Bravestone with that uh, with that sledgehammer and a huge elbow shot. It's kind of nice not to worry about what the count is at. And Smolder sends Mark Henry into the post, telling Mark Henry he should use his head. As always, let me know if the microphone is a little bit too loud. I'm still working out the kinks of this new mic. I think I have it significantly moved away from my mouth. It seems like it would be fun to get hammered with Mark Henry. He's got plenty left in the tank that uh, that sledgehammer didn't, because that sledgehammer you get about at most five shots. Yeah, Mark Henry would be a fun. I've heard conflicting reports about him. I've heard some people say like he's like the coolest, chillest guy and super nice and helpful, and other people just like must have caught him on the wrong day and said he's like a total dickhead. And it's like, yeah, I'm gonna go with the first one. Samoan drop on a Samoan. If I don't know if that's canon in the Jumanji world, but Dwayne Johnson is Samoan, so I'm calling it. Shocked Augie has not tried to get Dwayne Johnson a Potswoggle title reign uh, more frequently, but uh, this is one attempt. Huge knockout punch by Mark Henry on Smolder. This world's strongest slam. I don't know if he was going for it, but Smolder blocks it. Dragon screw leg whip. Taking out the wheels of Mark Henry and a huge kick to the back. If you are the one person saying a wrestler is a dick, it may be you. Very true. I've heard a couple people say it, but still, they're in the minority. Mark Henry is looking for that kind of... Mark Henry is the one that's been bringing the plunder, if you will, baby. Now he's got a baseball bat. You know what the WCW show... Oh, my God! Sammy Callahan doesn't even have an unprotected baseball shot to the head like that. On Eddie Edwards, Smolder took it and didn't even leave his feet. That is Dwayne Johnson no-selling a baseball bat to the face. Henry, body slam. Shades of the Junkyard Dog by Mark Henry. Paying homage to the men that came before him. Is that headbutt going to be enough? No, two count over. Smolder Bravestone is in trouble. Mark Henry went for something, but the rock counter with an overhead arm drag. Spin around. Trademark DDT. That is right out of the Dwayne Johnson playbook. Got bats and kendo sticks and sledgehammers strewn all about. And the rock underneath. Huge clothesline on Mark Henry, taking him down. Up on his feet. Got to be thinking if he's thinking spine on the pine. Another short arm clothesline. And now here it comes. He ain't got an elbow pad on, but he's going to go for it. People's elbow by Smolder Bravestone on Mark Henry. You have missed nothing, Professor Pirate, except a Smolder Bravestone victory, perhaps? Yes, he does. Smolder Bravestone with the people's elbow has defeated Mark Henry. 
Why is the rock dress like one of those many jungle adventures? Because it's Smolder Bravestone from Jumanji, eliminating one of Widden's two picks. Augie is uh, guaranteed in the semifinals, at least. I think he still has The Rock's moves. I mean, how many movies does The Rock actually do the fucking rock bottom? It's like half of them, right? But you can't hear it. He does have wonderful jungle music going on right now, so it's actually kind of delightful. Smolder Bravestone. He survived uh, a bevy of sledgehammer, kendo stick, and baseball bat attacks. And gets the W over Mark Henry here in the early goings of our Extreme Rules Tournament. All right, one down. Five more to go in our first round. We are going to move over to the Heels and Heels side of things for our non-Heels and Heels Tournament first round match. Of course, the Heels and Heels are literal sister podcasts on the Arcade Audio Network of, family, uh, network of Shows. Uh, have their women's division t title. Uh, the current champion is Danielle Ambrose, who will defend the title later on against former champion Nikki Bella, getting her rematch. So this go around, uh, the ladies and producer have decided to uh, see if a new streak can start with Asuka getting her first crack at the heels and heels title, if I'm not mistaken, or at least the first one in quite a while. Who will she take on? Well, if you remember last month, we saw Leslie Nope become champion. Well, another Parks and Rec attempt at reclaiming the title. Rashida Jones, renowned actress, writer, will be taking on Asuka in this first round match. I'm a big Rashida Jones fan. She may be on my list. I should probably tell my wife that. Only Rashida Jones there was. Thankfully, there was one. So, uh, trying to reclaim the title for Leslie Nope. Winner of this will get the Heels and Heels title shot later on in the evening. She's out to get revenge for Leslie. It's darn right. That is the girl from The Office. Uh, if you haven't seen uh, one, a very good independent comedy starring uh, Rashida Jones and Andy Samberg, Celeste and Jesse Forever, I'd recommend it. One of the first episodes of Married with Movies was about that movie uh, back in the day. Uh, she's been in a bunch of stuff. She's in Social Network. Ann Perkins. There's Rip. Rich for all of you that aren't uh, cowed up on things. She is hot. Um, had a Childish Gambino had a line that his crowd was more mixed than Rashida Jones and then she talked to him about it so he also had another lyric about Rashida Jones daughter of Quincy Jones is not looking great already <laughs> Ann Perkins sorry yeah, I think I said Amy uh, yeah but she's going to be woefully undermatched here against Asuka I believe Asuka is on the second rope uh, Smolder Bravestone, Rich, won that first match against uh, against Mark Henry. And uh, your pick's coming up next. Andre the Giant against Seth Rollins. And there's a nice Hurricane Rana there by Rashida Jones. Pawnee is probably not ready for Asuka. And Rashida, again, so far as weapons have been 0-1. She's also breaking out the bat. Oh, and it perfectly timed by Asuka. The big swing by Rashida. And Asuka caught her right in the midsection with a spin kick. Asuka has not won the Heels and Heels title before. Huge Shining Wizard of the... Or more like a running in Siguri. Yeah, Rich and Spencer want to confuse the shit out of... Uh, out of... Um, uh, the Championship Committee. Uh, me. Oh, big splash match by being co-champions. Eagleton is definitely not ready for Oscar again. Just like last month, um, the Parks and Rex references are um, are really not hitting me. There was a that was a co-choice with Spencer again honoring the the documentary Dragon Sleeper, almost like the Cold Skull. Karen learning kung fu from Dwight Shoot. Rashida gets out of it. And there's a stun gun. The official move of March of Madness 2018, which if you did not get a chance to watch March of Madness, you can go on uh, the Potswoggle YouTube channel. The full stream is there, and the best matches are cut up, and we hopefully are going to have another video soon from a Caribbean Kid, our yearly recap video. Wait on word on that. No guarantees yet, but I'm sure he'll... I'm not going to park. 
Asuka jawbreaker, running dropkick. I gotta say that Rashida's been kind of on point with some of these reversals. Hurricane Rana, it's the second one she snapped off on Asuka, and she is feeling it. Thank you, Tyler, for the... The, uh... Yo, you gotta watch all 20 hours of Marcho. Hey, man, it's still... Hey, think of it this way. We submitted 63 matches of Marcho Madness, and it was only, like, three hours more than WrestleMania. Honestly. Rashida picks Asuka up. Gonna shoot her over the top rope. Again, extreme rules, so... I believe you still have to get the pin in the ring, but you can brawl and move about. Rashida, I think she's got a Ruby Riot move set, if I'm not mistaken. A 20 hours was just the pre-show. Rashida trying to run and figure something out and not able to pull anything off. Asuka. Rashida counters again. Reverse DDT. But I'm here for those salient points, man. Elbows to the head of Asuka. Big knee to the face. Hydrago 15. We got Asuka and Parks and Rec actress Rashida Jones in a one on one match here for the semifinals of the Heels and Heels tournament. And the winner will take on either Nikki Bella or Danielle Ambrose later on in the evening. Coming up next, we got Under the Giant versus Seth Rollins. Extreme rules all night here for the Potswoggle title tournament. Again, I mentioned at the beginning of the show. Uh, make sure you go to Twitter at Podswoggle and send us your list for the, uh, the the selection of next month's tournament on May 30th at 8:30. It's our yearly viewer submission tournament. Oh, that was a weird uh, gravity-defying senton by Rashida Jones on Asuka, who is in trouble. Off-topic sitcom fans and thoughts. I've not watched it either. I know uh, my wife was a pretty uh, big Ro uh, original Roseanne fan. I don't mind it either. I haven't haven't had a chance to catch it yet. I think we got the riot kick. Riot kick by Rashida Jones. A huge upset. The ref takes his sweet time getting over for the count in a one a two count, but it was close. I just caught caught up on Atlanta, which was priority. Yes, it is, Rick. It is a pretty good Rashida Jones Caribbean kid. Asuka is in trouble. I see that B. Sumner has always sent, already sent his list in for, for May 30th. Ooh, another close two count. Asuka's in big trouble. <laughs> These are really good, B. Sumner, and I'm sure I'll be able to... I know I've seen at least two of them. And one's very easy to make. I'm not one employed, so I'll be diving into getting the highlight reel done for you guys. And whenever you're ready... We are ready for it. Huge uppercut by Asuka. She's got to get back in this. Oh, I thought that was going to be the hip attack. Maybe now the hip attack. Spin kick. And there's the running hip attack to a kneeling Rashida Jones. Had to send them all. I remembered. Glad there will be easy. And here comes the Asuka lock. There's going to be no rope breaks to save Rashida Jones. She's got it wrenched in. Will Rashida Jones tap? Yes, she will. A hell of an effort. But Asuka gets the victory. Huge come from behind victory. Rashida does not. There's a crazy senton from earlier. Does not avenge Leslie Nope. Asuka will see either Danielle Ambrose or Nikki Bella later on. Yes, you're going to go to Twitter and uh, at Podswoggle. Um, reply the list. Honey was not ready for Asuka. Uh, again, your limit is five. I will compile everything that I can find. She didn't know she was getting broken up with. I will make the list, and then the boys in the Swallow Squad will select them for the tournament in May. Asuka celebrating. We'll see her later on in the evening. The new streak has started. Will it continue? We'll find out in a little bit. Now this is this is a big one. It is literally the biggest one. Andre the Giant against the Cover Boy, who had a wonderful showing, his third Elite Eight performance in March of Madness uh, last month. Seth Rollins and Andre the Giant, but maybe with some weapons involved. Cover Boy. 
Work. Those beautiful, beautiful mutton chops on Andre the Giant. Those things are literally the size of like a fucking porterhouse. Open Tyler's is done as well. I'm, I'm so scared to see these all the time. Here's the other thing. <laughs> Very good. Uh, I will add it to the list, Tyler. Uh, the one thing I'm I'm interested about is if I able actually get a pick next month. Um, Augie used the power. I get to play the game, but I have to play it on the hardest setting possible. So I have to be very strategic in who I pick. God, well, Rollins is dwarfed by Andre, who just kicked the shit out of Rollins' face. And Andre the Giant is already looking for weapons. He's almost as tall as the ring! Jesus! R Rollins, Rollins ain't scared, though. Punching away at Andre, he's not going to be able to do much in the way of attacking Andre. It's crazy that Marcho was a month ago. Best 20-hour stream I've seen. It was not 20 hours. It was like 10. Tyler's off to have his wife. Enjoy the stream. We'll see you in a little bit, Tyler. My wife just uh, came downstairs. I don't know if she's going to be helping me, putting my baby to sleep. Nope, she's not. Okay, wonderful. Rollins has got Andre set up against the barricade here. Maybe I'm just going to punch him down. I was like, there's no way he's got a barricade break already stored up. Andre throws Rollins across the floor. Andre is going to throw Rollins into the post. This should have an effect where like the LED board like freaks out on those posts. Now Andre's Andre's originally I think was going to go down and get some weapons. Rollins distracted him. Andre the Giant in and of himself is a weapon. Oh, rake in the back. His fingernails are the size of Kentucky. And not even an offensive maneuver, but it still took Rollins off of his feet. You remember we were on this stream for 43 straight hours of March of Madness. Uh, by the end of the evening, March of Madness will be two years long. Actually, I think it was one of our shorter streams, believe it or not. Rollins now doing some arm work. Oh, he's got to outspeed Andre. Short uh, reverse DDT by Seth. Seth had some wonderful matches in March of Madness this year. Now Rollins realized he needs to get some some weapons as well. Getting a kendo stick. Gonna run right past Andre trying to catch him. Rollins now just sticking and moving. We got a full-blown chase going on here. And now Rollins is gonna find Andre on the outside. Nope, still messing with him. Okay, <laughs> this is getting a little comical. Turning into a Benny Hill routine. Oh, and Rollins finally catches him right on the dome with the kendo stick. Remember, we had 93,000 Swaggle Maniacs. <laughs> I sat in this chair for 87 hours straight through all the Swaggle Maniacs, blowing out the Impact Stream. It's true, we had more uh, more people than the Impact Stream. Never forget. Rollins looking for a uh, looking for a Super Dragon curb stomp on Andre the Giant. Always remember that March of Madness had more people watching it than TNA Impact, the third largest wrestling company in North America. The only part of the three-day stream I remember was that Saber Jr. just submitting everybody. Rollins went for a pin. Andre basically just farted him off. Rake of the eyes. Rollins sends Andre into the corner. Andre just elbows the knee. Rollins reverses. And there's a DDT again. Rollins has got to stick and move. Got to be quick. Uh, if Rollins win this, Augie will have 50% of the semifinals of the tournament already, eliminating Rich and Spencer. Rollins just kicks right to the face. Remember, and Ray kicking out 173 F5s. Yeah, Ray Phoenix, Ray Phoenix came to play in March of Madness. Andre lumbering about. Now, under the Giant getting a weapon. This could be very dangerous. Oh, he's got a chair. Chair to the back of the head of Rollins. Looks like Rollins' face hit the corner of the barricade as well. And that tech, and that technical wizard uh, under the giant working on the leg and then just stepping on his stomach, crushing all of his internal organs. Rollins is up, though. Throwing Andre back into the ring. Is he going to go for that chair? Nope, just going to run in after him. Rollins. Oh, there's the roll-up. Avada Kedavra super kick into a pin on Andre. Two count only. 
Rollins can't believe it. You know that means Rollins has got to have a pedigree or a ripcord. Maybe even a curb stomp set up. Standing moonsault. Under the giant would have no idea what to do with anybody in the business at the moment. Oh, look at those frying pan hands. And the gorilla press Rollins counters into a DDT. He's bust Andre open. Yes, make sure you check it. Oh, wait, ripcord, ripcord knee by Rollins. Andre's a bloody mess. There's no rope breaks here with extreme rules. Rollins for the victory. Andre kicks out. Yes, Caribbean Kid, make sure you check out the CAW Classic bracket he's got going on. March of Madness, all with fantasy characters. A fun concept that I'm looking forward to seeing. Frog Splash by Rollins. I have seen the Andre documentary. It was very good. Uh, we actually, I don't think we talked about it on last week's podcast, but uh, Rip and I were talking, and um, common thing with like mainstream wrestling documentaries, you have to sift through all the stuff we already know. But still, still an entertaining watch. Andre is a bloody mess. Now, Andre's up on the second rope. Yeah, I was going to say, Andre the Giant is on the top rope, and he gets right down. That's probably best for all parties. Rollins, another roll-up super kick. The man is a workhorse. He is exhausted. He rolls into a cover, and he gets him. Seth Rollins has toppled Andre the Giant. Didn't even need a second ripcord or a pedigree. That ain't blood balls. That ain't blood balls. There's one. Rollins CrossFit outlasts Andre. Augie now has a 50% chance of retaining his title. And Zack Sabre Jr. hasn't even fucking wrestled yet. At this point, it's literally going to come down to potentially Augie and nobody. Good lord. He's on the cover for a reason. Oh, he knows what he's doing. There's that ripcord knee. Knocking Andre out. There it is again. Bloody mess. But that didn't spell the defeat for Andre. This did. Super kick right on the fucking Cadillac-sized jaw of Andre the Giant. He is your winner. <laughs> it's looking like another month of Augie. Again, I feel bad because Augie's not going to get to use it that much with our schedule this upcoming month. Well, he's going to get to use it for the next two weeks when I'm not going to be on the show. Uh, for those of you who are here, you, you are the people who I need to have hear this. So, um, my cat is super sad. Andre Loss hasn't shut up since the pin. Um, so, I am going on a much-needed vacation with my beautiful wife next week um, yeah. on a cruise um, out of the country. So, I will not be here to watch the greatest Royal Rumble. Which, if you know me, I might make another breakfast food costume out of it. If you know me, the Royal Rumble is more important to me than my family, but I have to, you know. And the fact that it falls on our five-year wedding anniversary has nothing to do with that. Yeah, the greatest Royal Rumble, the first 50-man Royal Rumble ever, falls on my five-year wedding anniversary. So, I am going to, basically tonight is the last wrestling related thing I am doing for three weeks mm -hmm. because so this week's uh, podcast is already in the bank. Thanks Caribbean kid. Uh, this week is rich and I in the car next week's episode will be the rest of the squad discussing greatest Royal rumble, possibly doing pickums for it, having a good time. Uh, there'll also be an episode the following week. That'll be uh, game based, you know, whatever, what have you. And then the week after that, I will be in Chicago for a friend's bachelor party. I will be staying with Rip, and we are going to do the Royal Rumble drinking game uh, to the greatest Royal Rumble, and me see it for the first time, and for the first time in my life, not watching wrestling for two and a half weeks. So, do not tweet at me. I'll just have to avoid, I'll just have to delete Twitter off my phone. Do not tweet at me anything about greatest Royal Rumble, Snapchat me, whatever, uh, until... Uh, May 9th or 10th. I tried to tell Spencer what you're attempting to do, and he couldn't wrap his head around it. And that's and he's only been watching wrestling for like two years. I've been watching wrestling for 31 years. I've never gone more than a week, and even still half the time, like I find out what happens anyway. So me trying to go three weeks without watching wrestling and keeping Greatest Royal Rumble a total surprise is going to be a challenge of all challenge. Speaking of challenges of all challenges, we keep moving here. It is the man who won the 20-man 
Swaggle Mania Royal Rumble to get his spot in the tournament. Freakazoid, represented, uh, representing nobody, taking on a wins representative and former champion. He really wants his title back. Thanos, uh, not in Hawaiian shirt, but just Thanos. Yeah, it's 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 gonna be difficult, man. It's gonna be rough. Basically, like when I get back, that first week will be the most difficult because it's gonna be so fresh in everyone's mind. Once I get to May seventh and eighth and ninth, it'll be fine. I just will avoid raw. Um, also, I'm punting backlash picks. I'm literally just going to take the dub, take the zero, because if Triple H pins, pins Kurt Angle at any point this season, I get twenty five points anyway, so I'll be fine. I have to work 48 hours right over the Greatest Royal Rumble and then get tanked watching it. That's A. Uh, Rich, we haven't set up, like, we haven't thought about this in advance. Like, can we get anybody else to do the Rumble with us? Because if not, it's going to be 25 cards a person. <laughs> so if, like, Spencer could come over on, like, a Wednesday or Thursday night and, like, do it, or if anybody else just wants to be a, a fucking uh, week, weekday monster, let's see if we can make that happen, because... I'll do it, but it may be the best considering how much we're going to be drinking the whole weekend anyway. All right, Thanos and Freakazoid. Freakazoid! Scott Siner said it. You need to do a team of five to do it to go evenly. Well, yeah, normally we do ten a team. I mean, we've done crazier things. We might be able to wrangle some degenerates. That sounds like a great plan to me. And we're going to be recording it for, for your listening pleasure as well, so. If it wasn't in Europe, I'd make the drive to Chicago. Eh, just plan and plan accordingly. Whoever, God bless whoever draws Braun. God, who knows with that thing. I that I have no idea what's going to happen. And I love it. In fact, I get three Royal Rumbles in a year. Three Royal Rumbles in six months. It's great. Four, if you count the, the Potswoggle Rumble. Which featured Thanos tying it back into the match. Losing his Potswoggle Championship. And a wonderful final three. Kane, I believe, got pulled from that. I think he's got like a rally that day or something for for his uh for his uh mayoral campaign or whatever. But yeah, he's not listed anymore as an actual participant. Maybe they're trying to treat it as a surprise. I don't know. So shoulder tackle of sorts by Thanos. Thanos has got a. I'm surprised Thanos was able to make it here. He's got a big couple weeks coming up. Freakazoid's got nothing to do. He's had nothing to do for about 20 years. I will happily do the New Japan Rumble. I've been I've been trying to do New Japan Rumbles with Augie for two years. Slingshot or Stun Gun, the official move of March of Madness 2018. Freakazoid kicks Thanos off. Freakazoid, you know he's gonna he's gotta come up with something crazy, get some weapons involved here. Thanos never been pinned. The only man to defeat Braun Strowman in the game. Oh, and Freakazoid's got himself a ladder. Thanos <laughs> just punches Freakazoid through the ladder. Ladder's now set up against the stairs. Freakazoid's got him in a choke slam situation. Huge choke slam under the floor. Guys, I'm not gonna lie. The last time we had Thanos in one of these tournaments, as Freakazoid sends him into the ladder on the steps. Last time we won these tournaments, we willed it to happen. Thanos and Braun Strowman. I want to will Thanos versus Zack Saber Jr. to happen. Because that'll just be, I don't, at this point, nothing will surprise me. Thanos, huge. Lariat sending Freakazoid over the top rope and sent the ladder. What's Thanos doing? Oh my god, Thanos with a swan dive. Suicide style over the top onto Freakazoid. Shades of the Undertaker. Now he's got him up on his shoulders. Maybe going to drape him against the barricade. Nope, going to sit him crotch first onto the barricade. Thanos is looking impressive. But Corey Gray's model is pretty accurate. You can see him being upset at the rest of the announce table. He's just so pissed. Freakazoid's got to get some offense here. Running DDT by Thanos. This one's not looking pretty for Freakazoid. Picking him up. Double axe handle to the back. And Freakazoid's resilient. You know, you can't keep him down. Freakazoid, go behind. There's a version of a... Not sure what that was. Like a version of a... A zigzag, perhaps? 
Now maybe launch into a comeback here. Double axe handle. Uh, shades of Jeff Hardy. I think we have a little Jeff Hardy and Freakazoid. And if it is, but if that's the case, Jeff Hardy had a good run in March of Madness this year. And it is. Twist of Fate by Freakazoid. Thanos in trouble. Looking for the top rope swanton bomb. Hits the swanton on Thanos. He got all of it. Into the pin. What an upset this would be. Count of two. And he kicks out. Freakazoid making us sweat a little bit. Thanos. Got to get back up and running here. Winner of this has got Seth Rollins. Slingshot leg drop. And now Freakazoid off the ropes. I thought he was maybe running out. Running senton. I thought he was going to go out and get that ladder or get some more weapons. And as I say that, it's almost as Freakazoid heard me. Is he going to get that ladder? No, he's going to go underneath that side of the ring and get some new, some new toys. And he's pulling out a table. So far, we've this is the flash weapon we have not seen. Putting it into the ring. Thanos just standing all over it. Thanos. Oh, no. What is this? Oh, a dragon sleeper! A dragon sleeper by Thanos on Freakazoid! Freakazoid is in trouble! Freakazoid fights out of it! I thought he was going to reverse DDT him onto that prone uh, prone table. Sends him into the corner. Big back elbow by Thanos. Freakazoid blocks the attempt. DDT! Now Freakazoid taking too much time, pandering to the crowd. Gotta stay on Thanos here while he got the momentum. Dragon sleep on the table. This always makes things worse somehow. Getting more weapons. My god, Freakazoid's never satisfied. Now a sledgehammer. He doesn't like it. Thanos a clubbing shot. What's he going for here? Last ride. Last ride. Powerbomb by Thanos. Freakazoid hits the sledgehammer. Thanos throws Freakazoid back into the ring. Is that enough? Is that enough to do it? Pick it up. Oh, he's going for the Hell's Gate! Looking to choke Freakazoid out with the submission and Freakazoid taps! Is that a message to Zack Sabre Jr. later on? Thanos choosing not to go for the, 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 the Tombstone or any other offense. Instead, hits the Hell's Gate on Freakazoid and gets the tap. Unbelievable. Freakazoid put up a hell of a fight. And ultimately could not take advantage of all the weapons he introduces. Thanos setting up that dream matchup. But again, we, we're underestimating Beretta. Can Beretta shock the world? Thanos scaring the shit out of everybody. Telling the ref to get out of his spotlight. Thanos. He's war tested and we'll see him later on. Zack Sabre Jr. knows six counters to Hell's Gate. Wouldn't surprise me. See Thanos a little bit later on, but now it's time for the Heels and Heels Championship. Last month we saw um, one hell of a tournament. Saw Nikki Bella's reign end, but Heels and Heels are allowing her the opportunity because she's had a rough week. The opportunity to reclaim her title and become, in the process, the first ever two-time Heels and Heels Champion. If I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, she'd be the first two-time champion in the title's history. But to do so, she'll have to defeat somebody who looked very impressive last month. Your current Heels and Heels champion, uh, Dean's sister, cousin, I don't know how it works, Danielle Ambrose. I think we always went shield attire for, which I think is only fair. Uh, make sure turn entrance is on, because we can see that beautiful, beautiful Heels and Heels championship, which I did not forget to put in. For once. Winner of this gets Asuka uh, in just a little while. I expect everyone's comments to be classy throughout this match. We're people. They're people. We're all people. That's. Those are my words, and I'm sticking to them.
Ooh, excuse me. And after this, love is de- <laughs> love is dead, man. Eh, I don't know. I don't. I don't think that's. I will say it was a little sad because Rich and I were definitely the two only grown men at WrestleMania last year who were chanting love like the yes chant. It's out of sheer, not spite, because, man, we wanted to fucking believe. We suspended our disbelief. We were at kayfabe. True, she doesn't have to follow the house rules. Will that impact her performance? Possibly. She's wearing the Divas title, which will not be on the line. Only that she could be a double champion after this. I mistimed that uh, phrase and those motions, but that's okay. We're not here for your entrance, Nikki. No offense. That makes two engagements you've seen in person tonight. <laughs> Great point, Rich. Uh, Nikki Bella and John Cena's engagement was the second proposal I've seen in person that never led to a wedding. The first one is your current pod swoggle champion, Augie Artillis. <laughs> Here comes Daniel Ambrose to change the uh, change the conversation. Oh, fuck. This is why Augie should be here for these things. Because he'd laugh his ass off at that. <laughs> Daniel Ambrose, she's no nonsense. She's definitely the toughest heels and heels champion I feel like we've had since Jack Willing, at least. With a cool WrestleMania 30 mask. Also, Rich, don't forget, that includes you. Just don't put that on me. It's like I'm the one that's doing it. You were there too. Damn it, Tope wasn't either. Tope and I did have a foot, uh, 100 yard foot race <laughs> on the swamp. Looks like female Bane. Yeah, <laughs> everyone's calling the Bane this. Nikki, there's Daniel Ambrose slash uh, Macaulay Culkin in Page Master. Bell's rung were underway. Definitely got Nikki outsized and a DDT to get us kicked off. Both these ladies would be excellent opponents for Asuka. Danielle looking for her first successful heels and heels title defense. You're your big gal. <laughs> The record for Heels and Heels title defenses is held by Jacqueline at four. I was not there for Augie's. That was like a couples only kind of thing. Was it? I don't remember, man. That was fucking, what, eight years ago? Oh, God, I'm going to go throw up. (laughs) Was that eight years ago? I don't remember what that was. I know Tope and Michelle were there. I forget who else was there. (laughs) That's right. Oh yeah, Jordan was there taking pictures. Let's call commentary, shall we? Nikki Bella on the second rope. Launching herself. Drop kick to the face of Danielle Ambrose. Going for an early cover. This is definitely not going to do it. Not even a one. Cannot disrespect the heels and heels champion like that. Forearm smash. Oh, snap suplex countered into an inside cradle. Small package, too. Ooh, that was close. Has Nikki ever done anything off the top rope? I can't recall. I think the second rope. She always used to do, like, the like her version of the, of the disaster kick or whatnot, but I don't believe so. Headlock? Big knee lift. No, reverse power slam. Very impressive by Ambrose. Second rope. Diving forearm smash. Not sure if she got all of it, but looks like she got enough. Got Nikki on her shoulders. of an airplane spin. She's Gulak approved then, yep. Pinfall. And can only... So um, everyone's been making the Dolph Ziggler jokes, of course, that Ziggler is going to cash in his Nikki Bell in the bank or whatnot. But, like... Who else would be good for Nikki Bella? Uh, Drew Gulak made me think of that. It's not that Drew Gulak would be perfect, but who else it seems to be a, a Nikki Bella uh, who would be a good fit for her? She delivers a big boot to Daniel Ambrose. 
And shot to the back. Snap mare. And inside headlock, slowing things down. Ambrose counters with a shoulder tackle. Front headlock. Now she's going to drag Nikki. Are we going to see it? Are we going to see the. Nope. I thought we going to see the official move from March of Madness. Forearm shot. And here's the Nigel Lariat. I think Gulak would be great for her, but she's going to aim higher. I mean, uh, aspirationally, she's already been to the top of the mountain. But I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about. Oh, the original. Uh, like a future shock. Dirty Deeds. Yeah, that's it. It's been so long since I've seen Dirty Deeds. That's just Dirty Deeds. Count of two, and it's over. Damn, Danielle Ambrose. Not working by the hour. She knows Nikki has to go back and uh, cry some more tears. Nikki Bella's been defeated. Ambrose retains her Heels and Heels Championship. And that is why Cena left. <laughs> Jesus. No, I, I didn't meant like more so like who's going to be good for her. Like, you know, damn, Danielle. So we got Ambrose and Asuka later on. I just flat out forgot what Dirty Deeds looked like. But she's still the champ. Danielle Ambrose. Sorry to the heels and heels. Your queen has been defeated. That is unfair making Nikki compete this close to the breakup. Blame, blame Carolyn and Karma and the producer. I didn't book it. Yeah, I mean, she's been through a lot, you know? Daniel Bryan's sister-wife scenario. <laughs> Jesus. All right, well, here's the first of many matches I've been looking forward to tonight. Well, I've been looking forward to all these matches, but this one, there's been no man in Poswoggle's stream history since we started March of Madness uh, seven years ago that has captivated us like this man. He is your only back-to-back -back March of Madness champion. He's your only Marshall Madness and Pitt champion. He is Zack Sabre Jr. He'll be defending the title against a man who's also only lost once in the past two years. Your current Pitt champion, Trent Barretta. The GOAT. For the Heels and Heels Championship. He'll be looking to make history his first uh, title defense in a monthly tournament. But, of course, he had five successful title defenses. He beat Pentagon in the first round to win the title and carried it throughout the rest of the tournament. The winner of this will take on Smolder Bravestone in the next round. Uh, so as right now, uh, uh, Thanos, by the way, is represented by Widden. So Widden and Augie are guaranteed, one of the two of them are guaranteed to become your next champion. If Augie gets uh, Zack Sabre Jr. to continue a streak, Augie has a 75% chance of winning. I'm not going to go in as uh, Scott Steiner math there, even though it being Augie, it'd be appropriate. I have all I have always wanted to like Zack Sabre Jr., but just cannot seem to get into his matches. I was like that way until the past couple months. Uh, he just kicked it into another gear. And then, of course, it, it didn't help. It didn't hurt that he just in this game for whatever reason is like the greatest of all time um, in any game I mean the fact that this is a totally different creator wrestler and he's still winning is just incredible calling it now Zack Sabre Jr. will win by submission man it's he's damn won like 20 some straight matches doing it the tournament god the technical wizard but hey Trent Trent's no slouch Trent uh, in March of Madness last year, I'm going to run quickly through everyone's accomplishments. Trent last year defeated Rocky Romero, Bray Wyatt, TJP, Kushida, Seth Rollins, and then uh, lost to Zack Sabre Jr. Uh, in the final four of the tournament. And this year in the pit, Zack uh, Beretta defeated Rey Mysterio, Goldberg, Rusev and Jeff Cobb. So those are definitely against type. Zack Sabre Jr. has defeated 
since 2016's pit, Dalton Castle, Big Cash, Big Cash, not Big Cash, Big Cash, Jushin Thunder Liger, Mojo Raleigh. Oh, where is he? Scott Dawson, AJ Styles, Bobby Lashley, Samoa Joe, Trent Barretta, John Cena, Penta El Sierra Miedo, Kenny Omega, Pete Dunne, Kenny King, Ricochet, and Brock Lesnar. That is a list. <laughs> and now he's looking at uh, Bretta to be the first two-time defeat. Fuck it, it would be big cash now. Big cash, homie. There's that beautiful green belt. When is that going to exit that man's shoulder? Could it be tonight? I don't know. And Extreme Rules is not his forte, but we did see in the tournament final against Brock. Brock introduced some weapons because there was no disqualifications and no count out. And he was able to survive it. it. Didn't even matter. History says he keeps it until he dies at this point. Bro, not surprise me. <laughs> What's going on, Summer? I don't have to work tomorrow. What should I take shots to in this match? Uh, oh, I was going to say submission attempts, but it depends on what you're taking shots of. I was, yeah, I was going to say submissions are two counts. There's Trent Beretta. It just looks like he's gonna fucking kill you. Is there a Pee Wee Herman double snake double uh, double snake double oh seven? I don't know. I think I've seen a Pee Wee before. I should download him. Uh, not tonight, however. No, no Pee Wee tonight. All I have is Fireball, but I'm not sure. <laughs> but sure, why not? Small small shots of Fireball per submission attempt. God rest your soul, potentially. Zach. Yeah, yeah I think you'll see that again. This is for two uh, independent and New Japan stalwarts. This is such a big match. Creepy Charles Robinson holding the title up high. Bell is about to ring, and it has. We're underway. Zach comes out hot with a flying drop kick. Coming out every match, it seems like he has the perfect strategy. Should we get EMT on standby for David C? Potentially. Oh, Zach went to go shoot down. And take Trent uh, to his feet. Trent was ready for him. Both men are incredibly fast. Oh, Zach's legs bounce off against the rope with that suplex from Beretta. Now, Fireman's carry position. Gut buster. We've seen Zach get off to a slow start and still manage to, to capitalize. But I think that's how you have to beat him. But his counters are so pristine. And Beretta off the ropes. Uh, some miscommunication there. Pele kick to the face. That's what I drink during my Rumble game. You're a beast. We are one dude buster away. Maybe look at Zach looking for weapons. Zach Saber Jr.'s got a baseball bat. Beretta's going to peel it off of his hands. And a running shot to the throat. And Zach Saber Jr. had a nasty reverb off of that bottom rope. Beretta puts the baseball bat on the floor. He doesn't want to win that way. Zach with a European uppercut. I'm going to throw him out. Nope. Maybe looking for that vintage Orton DDT. No, just going to club him and kick him away in a prone position. Just brutalizing Trent. Drag him into the corner. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and one to grow on. Do we count chin locks and cravats as submission holds? I would. I mean, you can give up in those technically, so uh, I'd say I'll allow it. Another gut buster by Beretta. Second rope. Ooh, nice senton onto a seated Zack Sabre Jr. Now, Beretta, is he looking for that baseball bat or is he looking for something different? He is looking for something different. Hasn't been the best uh, early Zach performance. Kendo sticks. Springboard. Oh, what the what a fucking springboard DDT. Turning in ways that are totally un 
uh, unbelievable. Kick to the leg. Northern Lights suplex. No bridge. Getting Trent. Is he going for it? Here it comes. The cross arm breaker. Take a shot. And is this one over? Is this one over? Yes, it is. The streak continues. Everybody immediately taps to it. Zack Sabre Jr. is still your champion. Three seconds in a cross arm breaker. And that is all that it takes. Immediately cinches it in. I don't know what it is. I thought he'd hold on a little bit longer. He didn't take much damage, but it was done with. He is still your champion. Smolder Bravestone, you are next. Hand that man his title. The streak continues. Same rules going forward. Zack Sabre Jr. Moving on. Who will he potentially face later on? We're going to find out right now. Semi-finals. Seth Rollins and Thanos. We just saw Rollins topple one giant. Can he topple another one? He's the cover boy. But Thanos will rip your cover off. Winners making their way to the championship. God, Zack Sabre Jr. is incredible. Incredible. How long until there's a limit on his reign? Six months? A year? I don't know. I mean, the record only stands at a couple months. I think the record is two months for Captain Crunch. Captain Crunch won the title in May of last year, and he lost it in August. So three months is the record for championship reigns. Um, we've had several two-month reigns, but he's currently he has the record of defenses, six straight defenses of the title. Rollins and Thanos, spells rung, we're underway. Seth is busting out a Skywalker right to start. At a year, they got to a new game, so new chances of different AI. It's very true. We thought we were going to have different AI this year, and so far... His submission prowess, I mean, I know he's got either maxed out or a close to maxed out submission rating, but I actually checked it after March of Madness. Both Cena and Brock Lesnar had maxed out submission defense. So, like, they should be able to counteract any, and Brock still tapped out that quickly. So I don't get it at all. But will there have to be an anti-monopoly role? He's champion until he loses. That's A. Rest in peace, Bruno San Martino, but it's all right. Zack Sabre Jr. might break your record as Podswoggle champion. Avengers Infinity War would be like five minutes long if they send Zack Sabre Jr. instead of the Avengers. Very true. But also don't forget that uh, after uh, after uh, next month's uh, user submission, which you can go to at Podswoggle and send your picks in for now, following month is Money in the Bank. So he will then have to go into a Money in the Bank situation where... He could lose the title without even getting tender submitted. So, oh yes, sorry, Bruno San Martino tragically passed away today at the age of 82. Uh, our thoughts and uh, uh, best wishes to his family, the man. None of us would be here if it wasn't for Bruno. Uh, forget Vince Jr. and Hulk Hogan. Bruno was the man before any of us were here. Seth countering a suplex attempt. And another Skywalker on the floor. Now I'm drinking for a reason. Pouring out. Pouring out for DeBrun. And a third. My God. Three Skywalkers by Rollins. That one was on the kendo stick. He's going to throw Thanos back into the ring. Anyway, I know we're all rooting for Thanos here because we want to see the thanos Zack matchup. Oh, God. A one count. I was going to say I was a little worried, but it looks like we're still good so far. Rick in the eyes. Thanos sent over the top again. Rollins went for a running shoulder tackle, and Thanos caught him with a, with a kick. Rollins counting the Mad Titan with a different Disney property. And there's that shoulder tackle sending Thanos to the outside. Rollins, is he thinking uh, some kind of crazy dive? Or that he's maybe looking for an Acai Moonsault. Instead, no, that's exactly what he's thinking. Acai Moonsault! 
Beautiful springboard maneuver on the Thanos. Rollins is looking great. And as soon as I say that, he misses a super kick for counter with a sling blade. One another month of Augie, but that dream match, man. Seeing people fight outside the ring brings back sad memories of Braun and funny moments of Hinder Jinder. Uh, oh, choke slam by Thanos. No, Rollins blocks it. Yep, Jinder Mahal lost uh, his first round match because he threw his opponent into the ring before he got back into the ring. And then, of course, Braun Strowman got uh, screwed by Kenny King in the first round, destroying everybody's bracket. But still keeping Braun strong in the tournament, he's still yet to be pinned. Ripcord knee by Rollins on Thanos! Immediately into a pin. This could be a huge upset in so many eyes to count on. Braun is still yet to... He's been champion twice and is still yet to have been pinned to lose the title. He lost the second ever Pod Swoggle Rumble. And Thanos defeated him in a last man standing match earlier on in this season. Rollins top rope. Double axe handle. More like a chop to the skull. Thanos, clothesline, crashing Rollins to the mat. Uppercut by Thanos. Picks him up. Looking for a power bomb. Last ride. Last ride on Rollins. The throat slit by Thanos. Is he thinking Hell's Gate again, or is he actually going to hit the tombstone? I'm just going to stomp him in the butt first. Uh, and I think this time he's thinking Tombstone. Rollins up to his feet. Rollins is in trouble. Rollins kicking and fighting. Rollins has countered the Tombstone. Tombstone by Rollins on Thanos. He crosses the arms. The upset. The ref takes forever to get down for the pin. And he kicks out at one. Man, he got to think if the ref got down quicker. That would have at least been a two or possibly it. Rollins, super kick. has busted Thanos open. Seth Rollins, and then he takes time taunting instead of following up. Standing moonsault, same kind of sequence with Andre earlier. The cover boy looking for the win. Second ripcord knee. Thanos is out in the center of the ring. Rollins the pin. The count of two. Seth Rollins has not done it. Ooh, that was close. Thanos still in this. Thanos is rated a perfect hundred. And the Giant Slayer has not done it yet. <laughs> God, Giant Killer, God Killer. He may have done it being a Zack Killer. Thanos cannot get any more offense. Him missing that tombstone earlier could have been the, the story of this match. Snapmare. Uh, and Thanos is going to fight off that gouging of the nose and eyes. Fall away slam. It's the fall away slam. Thanos is beat. He's taken so much abuse. Oh, uh, now another choke slam. Choke slam on Rollins. Thanos, now again, they have the momentum and they take time to do something else. At least this time Thanos is looking for some weapons. And he's got a ladder. Learning from Freakazoid earlier. And then he said he just puts it down and gets a side Russian leg sweep for his troubles. Rollins running kick. And he did this to Andre earlier. Those stiff kicks of the face. Thanos going to throw Rollins back into the ring. Not going to bring the ladder with him. Instead going to focus on dishing out more punishment. STO. Titan Wrecker. Colossus Smasher. Thanos. Looking for the tombstone again. This time he will hit it. Jumping tombstone. Pile driver on Rollins. The cover by Thanos. Count of two. No! And Rollins kicks out. Unbelievable. But he's calling for it again. A second throat slash. Does he have another one in the bank? Rollins is busted open. Both men a bloody mess. Into the pin. Two only Rollins just eke that shoulder up though. That looked like desperation. Thanos went for another attempt. Rollins counters. 
Schoolboy super kick. That's what he beat Andre. The, he beat Andre the Giant with that move. Thanos with a running, spinning clothesline. He's going back out onto the floor. Seth Rollins has provided us so many good matches and moments in March of Madness in our live streams. This one is no exception. He's got a sledgehammer. Bow! Oh, the back of Rollins. Two huge shots. Will we see a flaming table? I doubt it. Rollins is hurt. The throat slashed by Thanos again. Rollins is having trouble getting up. Just a choke slam. Choke slam on Rollins. Thanos will look to end it there. One, two, no, Rollins is still in it. What is he working from? How does he get it? Back to his feet. Tomb, stone, pile driver, number two by Thanos. The pin, the cover, one, two, and three. Thanos has done his part. It was a hell of an effort by Seth Rollins. But Thanos is in the championship for the Marcho, uh, for Podswoggle title tournament. Rollins would get beaten by H.S. Amber. Of course he would. Rollins with a hell of an effort, but Widden is in the championship. Who will he face? It's going to be definitely one of Augie's picks. Infinity Gauntlet versus Infinity Armbars. Thanos is there. Will he be joined? Let's find out. Uh, so Zack Sabre Jr. has already tapped out John Cena and Brock Lesnar. Let's add The Rock to that list, huh? That'll be fun. Or, at this point, Augie has to root against The Rock, because I think Zack has a better chance against Thanos than The Rock does. It is Zack Sabre Jr. against Smolder Bravestone. Uh, we'll turn entrance off, but we'll leave, uh, of course, title on. I need some bum indie guy to dress up as Thanos for a match to get in the pit next year. It's a win-win for Augie. But he's got to think about who he wants to take on Thanos uh, in our main event of the evening. This would be 1, 2, 14. This would be Zack Sabre Jr.'s 18th consecutive win <laughs> in Podswoggle tournament play. Which is absolutely incredible. And as a record that will never be topped, I don't think. Ever. We've had... We had Jay Briscoe and Finn Balor and Jason Voorhees have pretty... And Captain Crunch have some pretty great records. So that one, I think, is, is untouchable. The bell's rung. Oh, me and The Rock! The Rock tried to come out hot as opposed to Zack. And Zack just stood there, waited for him, and caught him with the kitchen sink right in the, in the stomach. He's just always ready. He's going to be so dwarfed against Thanos, though. Pele bicycle kick. What was he looking for already? I thought he was looking for a submission already. I was like, good lord. Oh, but the rock spits on the hand. Ugh, I can only imagine the, the crumpet-inducing uh, bad teeth jokes the rock would have lined up for Zack Sabre Jr. Smolder off the ropes. Zack with another shot to the stomach with a well-placed knee. Oh, there's a submission for you. Take a shot, David C. That is a nerve hold onto the shoulder. Headlocks count. That counts. Oh. There's a nice tilt-a-whirl slam there by Smolder. The other thing, like, we haven't seen Zack even really get hit with that many finishers or signature moves to see if he can even get a kick out. 
Like, if Smolder hits a people's elbow, like, is that it? Is that enough? We haven't really ever seen him have to fight out of it. He just always has the upper hand, which I think is the most shocking thing. Like, I get if he hits a submission, his submission skills are second to none, but, like, just he dominates the matches at the same token, too. Look at him. Look at this technical wizardry. Smolder over the top. And a shoulder tackle sends him to the floor. Asking Smolder to get to his feet. Running, flying, nothing. And now look. He, all right, so this could be a mistake. He's doing the crab walk, which is normally the prelude to the arm, the arm breaker. He's on the floor. He can't get the victory on the floor. Smolder actually is saving uh, Zack Saber Jr. from a potential pitfall there by being on the offense. Smolder is going to look for a weapon. Didn't do any uh, benefit to Beretta earlier. He's got a sledgehammer that immediately gets him out of his hands. And now, Brain Buster onto the floor! My goodness! I don't know if that's his uh, his arena finisher. It potentially could be. Zack Sabre Jr. might switch it up and go for a pin. No, instead, gonna get Smolder to his feet. It is cross arm breaker time. Smolder Bravestone is in trouble. Do we have another one on our hands? Yes, we do! He has done it again! He has tapped out Dwayne Johnson in three seconds. It is set up. It is Zack Sabre Jr. and Thanos for the championship in just a few short minutes. That brain buster on the floor didn't hurt us. This is getting out of hand. Yes, it is. It's just, it, it's just immediate. It's three seconds and it's over. You can't escape it. It's literally going to take the Mad Titan to escape this. Give me my title. It is the seventh defense in a row as a fan of submission wrestling. I love this. <laughs> Can we send an Okada to try to finish Zack Sabre Jr.? Okada can't even get past Baron Corbin, man. Like, <laughs> it's, it ain't going to do anything. Well... We will take a pause on that. And we will get our Heels and Heels Championship decided with Danielle Ambrose, who's also been dominant. Zach needs to get beat one of these damn days so I can turn around and see select Zach Zaber Jr. Western Bacon Chi. Junior Western Bacon Chi. It is Asuka. Trying to rip the title from a very dominant Danielle Ambrose. They're evenly matched. What will happen? Let's find out. On WCW Saturday night, 6.05 after your Atlanta Braves game. If Heels and Heels are still there, I would encourage them to also take uh, suggestions from fans for next month's tournament. Um, kind of uh, play along with what we have going on. I wonder if an 87 rating is magic somehow. That's what Zack Sabre Jr. is at. Uh, I don't know, man. I, I don't have an answer at this point. I just don't. Bell's rung. We're underway. Neither woman's really paying attention. Asuka went for something and missed. And Daniel Ambrose answered with a spike power bomb to start. Some chops. She, again, Ambrose is a tall woman. And Asuka sends her crashing to the floor. Whoever it is has to the upper hand on him from the start and not let up. Well, that's what we thought Brock had in the championship. Asuka's got a table. Oh, and Ambrose punches her through it. We have not seen him get, like, you'd have to think at some point that somebody will have the advantage long enough to hit a finisher to see if he even can kick out of it. I don't think I've seen him get hit with a finisher this whole time. 
like it's just something it's not even like his submission power it's just the momentum that the character carries it's insane I know that Cena hit him with one in the championship match last year and it was early in the match and Zach kicked out like normally a guy would after one finisher yeah and he does get it super fast as well so it's also his momentum that's helping him uh Ambrose gets a count at one of Oscar. Sorry, not to talk over the women's match. I'm not uh, Larry Zabisco. Oscar sent over the top. Going to suplex Oscar back into the ring. Oscar counters. Oh lord! Oh no! Just a uh, uh, sit out. Suplex into the ring. Thought she's going to suplex her onto the floor. Oscar tapping that booty. He counters a lot too, which is primarily how he builds meter. Yep. Dragon Sleeper by Ambrose. Let's go for here. The stun gun, the official move. Never mind. Do that. Oh, yes, and a shot. Sorry for sorry. I was too busy analyzing and reading. I forgot the Dragon Sleeper. Yeah, of course, that's a submission. Take a shot, David C. Asuka counters, reverse DDT. Working on the arms, setting up the Oscar lock, perhaps. Also, submissions are just very, very strong and heavy. We saw it earlier. Oscar didn't even really have much momentum against Rashida Jones. One Oscar lock, tap out, it was over. So submissions just carry a lot of weight. We saw it with Danos earlier, too, against Freakazoid, even though he had momentum on his side there. Ambrose got Oscar up against the ropes. I think she's looking for the Lariat. Yep, we'll bounce off. Shades of Nigel McGuinness with that wacky line lariat. Targeted elbow strike. Playing the game submissions are hard to get out of even when you're controlling it. Oh, that's going to be my downfall when I'm controlling things. Dirty Deeds. Dirty Deeds by Daniel Ambrose on Asuka. The pin. One. Two. No, Asuka kicks out. I think the first woman to kick out of that Dirty Deeds, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's... Oh, God. If I have control next month, I'm totally going to still fucking lose Zack Sabre Jr. Also, I haven't played the game that much. Augie's setting me up for fucking failure. Crucifix by Asuka on Ambrose. Oh, there's the spin kick. Asuka for the hip attack. Nails Ambrose. Now he's going to set her up for the Oscar lock. Are we going to see a new champion? Whips the arm, locks her in, crosses the body. Are we going to see a new heels and heels champion? Oscar wrenching at Ambrose. Ambrose in trouble. She's hanging on longer than anyone's hung on against Zack Sabre Jr. Ambrose hanging on. She survives it. So just as I'm promoting submissions, she survives the Oscar lock. And now Asuka goes for a pin, and it's a two count, although that pin would have been funny. David C. taking another shot. So, all right, so the Asuka lock has been broken. Does that mean that uh, Thanos will be able to break the Zack Sabre Jr. arm bar later on? Asuka standing on a table looking for a weapon. She's going to pull out a ladder. Haven't seen anybody really use that or a table yet. Takes so long to get it set up. And she's going to... Nope. Ambrose counters. Ambrose gets the ladder back. Ambrose smashes Asuka in the face with the ladder. She misses the second shot. Takes it back from Ambrose. Asuka gets a shot in of her own. The ladies are trading ladder shots. Asuka now is going to prop it down on the floor. Ambrose struggles to her feet. Counters the shot from Asuka. Side Russian leg sweep. Oh, and it looks like the back of her head might have clipped that ladder. Is that enough to do it? Nope. The ref counting on the ladder. He's got a mat in front of him. It still insists on using the counts on the ladder. Ambrose does have a lot of toughness. Setting that ladder up now. Good to see these ladies using their weapons. Asuka survives it. Still trading this ladder back and forth. Another shot to Ambrose. Misses the shot when she's on the floor. Hits her again with it. More shots. Asuka just wasting Ambrose, who no-sold that one. And gets back to her feet. Asuka blocks. 
Crucifix into a pin. One, two, two count only. Both ladies are spent. So much energy used on those ladder shots. Ambrose couldn't even get to her feet. There's the spin kick. Asuka one more time. Running hip attack. Asuka's going to go to the top rope. Not going for the Asuka lock. This is not out of Asuka's playbook. Went for the elbow drop, and Ambrose had it scouted. Fisherman suplex. Will she hold on to it with the bridge? No, she does not. Asuka again barely clipped the ladder. Ambrose taking time to cater to the crowd. Asuka slow to her feet. Shot to the back. Another side Russian leg sweep dangerously close to the ladder. Puts Asuka in a seated position. And are we going to see a shot? No, going to just pick her up to one knee. Asuka blocks. Ambrose took too much time. And there's the original Dirty Teeds. Original Dirty Deeds, one percenter, headlock driver, whatever you want to call it, into the new Dirty Deeds. This is one hell of a comeback by Daniel Ambrose. The pin on Asuka. One, two, and she got her. Danielle Ambrose, a wonderful victory. She is still, still, she is still your heels and heels champion for another month. A wonderful combination of moves, taking Asuka down. One streak has ended in real life, and her video game streak also ends at the hands of Danielle Ambrose. Wonderful Kevin Dunn camera work there. Dirty deeds are dirt cheap, but that victory was not. Danielle Ambrose is still your champion. We will see her next month for the Heels and Heels Championship. And the viewer submitted picks. All right, this next one, I gotta remember I have a child sleeping upstairs for. It is your current champion, two-time March of Madness champion, pit champion, undefeated legend, Zack Sabre Jr. against former Potswoggle champion, never been pinned, never been submitted, it's already set up for WrestleMania, the game even knows how off the chain this is. Thanos, he's rated 100 It is for the title for this match. I'm just drinking from the bottle. Here we go. Again, you also have to remember uh, that in March of Madness this year, Zack Sabre Jr., uh, on a technicality, won his match against... Uh, what was the controversial Zack Sabre Jr. match? He was like a half second away from losing this year. Uh, was it against Omega, I think? Omega or Dunn, Zack was like... I God, it was, it was just like a week ago, or two weeks ago. Uh, yeah, it was right. It was uh, supposed to be a double countout with Kenny Omega. And what happened with it? I, I don't remember, as everyone's commenting on it, I don't remember what happened or what we had to do for it. The bells rung, we're underway. Thanos and Omega starts out slow, but look at look at him. He just knows. He just goes for the legs of Thanos. That's exactly the strategy you should do. You didn't want to double count out, so I restarted it. Why did I, oh, because I couldn't do it. No, 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 I couldn't do it on the challenge bracket. That's why. I can only do it if I know in the play-in rounds. So a double count that I can't... Yeah, I couldn't justify, so that's why. I've got to take a break from winning my Pat McAfee paper to give this my full attention. Yeah, I remember what it was now. Zach? Oh, here's a submission. Not an actual submission, but take a shot. Uh, I know you're just drinking from the bottle, David, but... Taker... Why is Taker taunting uh, with the throat slit so early and Zach hits a sling blade right out of the gate? Now Zach's got Thanos on the apron. What in the hell is this going to be? I don't think nothing. Oh, that was very impressive. Zach from the top rope. A flying clothesline on the Thanos who was on the apron. The tournament goat. The tournament god. Taking it to Thanos early on. There's a back elbow by Thanos. 
Snap DDT on Zack Sabre Jr. And again, Thanos very confident with these throat slits in the early stages of this match. It is Augie versus Widden here. One of these two men will be Swoggle Squad champion until May 30th at least. Thanos went for a shot. Zack counters. Drop toe hold. <laughs> the announcers are rightfully very worried. Zack looking for some weapons. What's he going to pull out? He's going to pull out a ladder. We saw used to perfection the last match. Thanos is going to fight that ladder from the hands of Zack and smash Zack right in the face with it. You don't need a gauntlet with six stones when you got a ladder and you got a face bouncing off the ring post like Thanos has just done to Zack Sabre Jr. Oh, but Zack battles right back. And Thanos actually ends up crashing onto the ladder himself. Every time you think Zack is down, he just has the right solution. The right time. Went for a big pump-up kick. And now he's hitting those short little kicks to the leg. That's about five of them in a row. And Thanos sends Zack Sabre Jr. up against the table. Oh man, what is this? Smashing his head onto the table. I thought he had Zack set up. Oh, good lord. I thought he had Zack set up to smash him through the table, but instead he throws him into the ring post again. This has been barbaric. Zack thrown back into the ring. What Thanos doesn't know is Zack has the hidden submission stone. <laughs> yep, the submission stone. The, the seventh uh, infinity stone. Thanos out of his element. Second rope. Gonna ask Zack to get to his feet. Double axe handle onto the dome. Thanos. Now, oh. Shot time. Accolade. He's got him in a camel clutch. How apropos would this be if Zack Sabre Jr. ends up tapping out to Thanos? That's another submission. But Zack survives. Thanos rolls out of the way. Clubbing shot. Go behind. Thanos blocks. It was passed in from Kurt Angle. Who got it from you? It will not be named. Revert. Oh, reverse DDT. It ends up being a backbreaker. This is what we've been waiting for. Thanos with a wake-up taunt. He's got Zack up on his shoulders. Zack Sabre Jr. is going to counter the tombstone. Couldn't even get it off. Tombstone pile driver by Zack. The man cannot be hit with a fucking submit, uh, with a fucking finisher. Northern Light Suplex. We finally thought we were going to see it. Now we will see the cross arm breaker. Can Thanos survive it? The cross arm breaker. He has it locked in. Thanos is in trouble. Will he tap? Will Thanos tap? He's not tapped out yet. It's the longest anyone's ever survived this cross arm breaker. Thanos is not tapping out. He is the first man to survive it. Zack was confident. Oh, a small package. Small package out of nowhere. One, two, two count only. It has been proven that it can be survived. Thanos has survived the cross arm breaker from Zack Sabre Jr. Oh my goodness. Rolling neck breaker. Thanos immediately rolls to the floor. Sound strategy. He rose his fist because it's never not worked. He just thought he had it won. This match definitely has already delivered. Zack's got a kendo stick. Oh my god, he ripped it right from his hands and demolished him in the stomach with it and then another shot in the back. Small package would have been the funniest thing of all time. Nothing says a Thanos went, oh my god, a choke slam, but he's really close to the barricade. Oh god, a choke slam onto the floor by Thanos. Into the barricade again. Smashes his head against it. A knockout punch. Zach just standing up to it. Another shot into the barricade. Smashing his head into it again. Oh my god, how long is he going to do this to the poor man? At least until Zach gets out of it. Go behind. These two are fucking stealing the fucking show. Belly to back suplex. I am out of breath. We've never had to see Zack Sabre Jr. fight this long or this hard for anything. Thanos into the steps. The guy in the blue t-shirt's loving it. You better be paid like 6,000 bucks for these tickets. Camera done refuses to move the camera. God, if he can beat Thanos of all people. Oh, he's going for that brain buster. Brain buster onto the floor in the kendo stick. That kid has the exact same outfit I wore to this year's Mania. I'm kind of creeped out. Again into the steps. 
Zack Sabre Jr. feels very confident, but again, they got to get back into the ring to resolve any of this. He's going for a... What's he going for here? Oh, he's going for another variation of the cross and breaker. And he's got the leg trapped as well. That is straight out of the Zack Sabre Jr. playbook. He tapped out. He tapped out onto the floor, but the ref couldn't call for the bell because it was on the floor. The ref just stared at Thanos. He did not call for the bell. The match has to be won in the ring. Zack Sabre Jr. are a huge tactical error. He got the tap out on the floor. He got the visual pin. Thanos now back into the ring, back on the offense. Choke slam on Zack Sabre Jr. Into the cover. The pin. One, two, three. We have a new Podswoggle champion. Thanos has finally, finally beaten Zack Sabre Jr. But... He tapped out on the floor. The ref is not able to call the victory on the floor. It has to be done in the ring. My goodness. Zack Sabre Jr. had him beat. He trapped the arm of all things. Thanos quit. Thanos taps out. But in the end... He gets him back in the ring. It took one choke slam after all the abuse Zack Sabre Jr. had taken. And now who is going to beat this man who just beat a god himself? Thanos joins Brock Lesnar, EC3, and Braun Strowman as a two-time Podswoggle champion. Whew, boys, I, I have no problem saying that that is an early, early candidate for... Swoggle Mania 5 rematch, exactly as JY and Rich just said. No matter if the title's on the line or not, Zack Sabre Jr. lives by the controversy, dies by the controversy. Glad it ended about 15 minutes to get ready to record a podcast. I'm glad it was perfect time for everybody. Another classic one is in the books. We will see Thanos next month. He is not unbeatable. We saw Zack Sabre Jr. beat him. We just didn't see Zack Sabre Jr. win. But will we see him again? I do not know, but we will see Thanos next month. May 30th, it is the viewer submission tournament. Again, go to Twitter, add us at Podswoggle with your list of the five people you want to nominate to potentially see in the tournament. It can be anything you want. I will compile the list of everybody I actually find. Swoggle Squad will pick it from there. Your new Swoggle Squad champion is Michael Widden. Uh, Augie had a hell of a run, but now Widden is the champ. And uh, we'll see if he can retain it. Uh, on May 30th with your guys' picks and hopefully me controlling everything uh, or controlling at least my selections. If you have one nominee for a tournament, you uh, can't do better than Zack Sabre Jr., it seems. It's very true. The man deserves a rematch, and I think he'll get one. It might just not be in May. It might be in October. It's Swoggle Mania. I'm already going to jot that one down. Thank you for watching the stream. Of course, ArcadeAudio.net for this podcast and the other one in our network of streams. Go to... Uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, of course, Twitch that you're on right now, YouTube for former streams, and of course, the stream will be if you want to relive that amazing main event, go check that out there. Um, Podswoggle at gmail.com, patreon.com slash arcade audio. For $5 a month, you get bonus content and cool stuff there. You might have some videos coming your way very, very soon. Check out Caribbean Kids, hashtag CAW Classic, this Saturday on his Twitch channel. It starts at noon. He's going to be going all day long, just like March of Madness. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, the only problem with Swoggle Main October is we can't get the Podswoggle Monster Mesh. You never know. Thank you, Caribbean Kid. Love to you and all of, uh, of you guys who join us every single month as well. We'll see you in May for the tournament. Uh, this is your host, Mullet, swogging off for Podswoggle Wrestling Podcast Entertainment. We are swogging off for the Podswoggle Title Tournament. See you with your picks in just a short six weeks. Good night. <laughs>